Okay, Ruler, settle down. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get singles for all your Force of Will and other trading card games, as well as these amazing patrons. Special thanks to guest lecturer member, Vite Raman. Thank you for your support. Class is in session. Hey, the Rulers, Demo73 here, bringing you our first feature match featuring the new Rulers from the 7th. We have Paul on the left playing Beatrice Belial with the Null Package, and I am on the right playing Asmodeus with a Stemma, Time Goddesses. So we're doing some pretty fun stuff here. This was just kind of our first takes on these Rulers, really trying to see what they kind of do interact with, how they interact with each other, um, what it's like to try to get rid of a Stemma's being unable to uh, win the game mechanic, as well as Belial being able to stop your opponent from winning the game. Um, all kinds of cool stuff here. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. And also just to see exactly how much of a detriment that 2,000 life point life total is when you have access to Belial's God's Arts. So, let's go ahead and jump right in. I think that uh, Paul is going to be on the draw for game one here. Obviously, we're playing with a 60-card deck uh, on the Gizmodius side, and then uh, Paul's detriment being that he has one less card in his hand in 2,000 life. So, first turn Heaven's Rift here, uh, and ultimately just seeing a pass. Uh, we want to see a redstone there, but unfortunately, red-white just happened to come up. We do see a popped coin for Mikage uh, to get Castle of Beatrice uh, straight to the grave. Um, it makes a lot of sense. It's a worthy use of the coin. Um to be able to just quickly uh, get that castle to protect stuff in the grave. Uh, Adaractius Memoria coming down a three color stone for this color combination because of the three and down comes the Electo. So we're already starting to set up this kind of null cycle control potentially if we see uh, the rest of the pieces or, or something like wall to be able to make a discard. After draw but before recovery considering flashing something in choosing to flash in the black witch here just to make use of the will we're not too worried about how much he's going to be searching but it's more so that we can get a body on field while we have the excess will and then tell paul like hey this is something you have to deal with right now uh you're gonna have to waste resources to kill it in advance this is something we've seen a lot of players starting to do we saw it a lot last gp it's just kind of preemptive black witch just to kind of slam it when you have the available will uh, and then put a body on board and then threat we are going to do a very quick judgment into Estema here, which is going to get to kill those two resonators, produce us a couple extra will if we want, ultimately choosing to draw a couple cards. The reason why is because we want to kill Estema anyway, and the fact that we get these two uh, bodies kind of just controlled while suddenly having Estema who can do some amazing things with her precision and first strike and bane um, to be able to help us produce extra will, keep the board clear, I'll do all kinds of stuff just as a really good early game play if you need to. Down comes that Magic Stone Research Institute. Choosing to get rid of the Six Sage Stone here, hitting another one doesn't really do him much good. Uh, he doesn't have any tap effects for any of his rulers, but it does give him access to whatever color he wants, which we see a follow-up of Wall of Terror. This is the thing that turns on Null pretty quickly, also gives him a lot of barrier and protection, um, while also being a nice little Bane threat, potentially. But now we get to do kind of all kinds of cool stuff, especially since we didn't see six sages stones here. We just get to get get comfy using uh, a Stemma to swing in. Moving right out the bat, we're going to go ahead and swing in the air for 12. Debating whether or not to go after the wall. Because we have first strike in Bane, even if he does use up his whole hand, um, it feels okay because we, it still wouldn't be able to protect it. Ultimately, we're going to go face, though, to try to bait out one of those Belial God's Arts. He does, uses Belial's God's Art here, draws a card, can't take damage, and we play Asmodeus Demon. So we RFG two Resonators off the bat from there, which gets us two uh, or four plus one plus one counters. And the one thing to note about Asmodeus Demon here is that it's loss of life. Belial doesn't stop loss of life, so it's pretty good. No uh, wall here, discarding an Electo and a Sigurd, getting those back to the grave, and a Hunting Angel as well. So now we're certainly at three um, Resonators in Grave to be able to pull out the Electo if we wanted. That being said, we have a lot of stuff in the... Um, a lot of stuff on field to sacrifice to keep our hands full here, which feels okay. Um, but it is, you know, especially since Asmodeus Demon is probably going to just go ahead and burn him out a little bit here preemptively. Um, even if he does make me use the Electo. So we are going to see those three RFG'd. 
uh, and then he's going to um, attempt to cast the voice from the void from the graveyard to draw a card um, to then force me to uh, have to discard a card. His hand is empty, so he gets to cast it for free. So casting in response, we're going to do Great Keeper Velsivaria. This is so that we can have another, once again, another body on field to keep our hand clear. And then we're going to do some draw power here. This is another thing that's crazy for Asmodeus. This card gets very big very, very quickly um, and also makes it so that uh, the goddess uh, temple that we can play sometimes later just gets us a lot of value here. So draw us off of that. We're going to go ahead and sacrifice the Black Witch. We say that's fine. She's done her job. Um, going to use uh, the choosing not to use wall to discard to be able to set up. Um, so down comes that castle of Belial. And then make an interesting play here to be able to swing in with his wall, which now has Bane because he has the um, plus 400 attack and Bane, so, but it's even bigger because of the academy. Um, so that it'll be a trade against the Estema. This is a little bit interesting, getting rid of the discard outlet when he has the Electo on field. So now like spot removal can just remove the Electo sometimes, but ultimately does choose to um, just trade off the Estema, which is uh, pretty okay. Um, we can use the extra will from it being killed with thanks for the Estema. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and use that will from Estema for the thing dying to then, um, cast the Light of Raisin Revive, which is going to bring back that Virgil that we RFG'd earlier um, to be able to put on a lot of pressure during his turn. You'll see his clean up here. He did forget the Null Trigger at the end of turn. Uh, we do catch it later. So unfortunately, Virgil's not going to get too much value here because we're gonna you're going to see some cleanups. This is an important part about these new um, rulers is that there's a lot of abilities, a lot of abilities to remember. I find myself oftentimes missing the Estema Trigger, missing the Beatrice Trigger. So like it takes time to get these guys practiced up. Just something for you to keep in mind. So. Getting a six sage stone here with the Estema, choosing to swing with the Guardian of Elsevaria, who is hitting for a potential lot of damage. Or right now he's only hitting for zero damage because of that castle. But in response to no blocks, we're gonna go ahead and use the Asmodeus God's Art. Four, five, six, seven. So seven unique or six unique things just got hit. So um, all of my resonators get six plus one plus one counters, and I just removed seven cards from the grave. So now that guardian is actually just getting a 13 point boost to its attack. This is again, trying to force that second God's art to say, hey, you know, if you want, you gotta have to do something right now. Um, one thing to note is that castle of, um, that castle is very effective for being able to answer the Virgil um particularly because i can't burn his face um recognizing that i forgot this is where the cleanup happens for forgetting the null trigger we say that's fine let's go ahead and just make it as best as we could um we would have had that one card in hand before this swing and i go ahead and sacrifice the uh i go ahead and just sacrifice the virgil because it would have been in play in response to that null trigger so you say you know what virgil's done his job um we'll, we'll just say that that he died it's fine um, still get those six plus one plus one counters on the board here. Now attempting to swing in, he's going to do a God's Art of Beatrice so that he has um, just to be able to protect himself. He does have a card in hand though, so he doesn't get to draw two off of the God's Art, which is a little bit suboptimal for the Electo, but it does keep him from taking all this damage because um, even it would have been nine damage even without that uh, Castle of Belial, which is a lot. Paying two, we're gonna go ahead and play Palace of the Three Goddesses um, because I have a lot of cards RFT'd. This lets me put any goddesses into my hand and the Guardian of Valsivaria makes it so that anything that is white or red in my hand has goddess as its subtype. So get to put in a Charlotte, get to put in a Hunting Angel, get to put in an Athena. So a lot of pressure for just two will here. Um, Hunting Angel gets to pop the Electo. Athena can swing in this turn if I wanted, um, choosing to use the effect of um, Charlotte 
Uh, using the effect of Charlotte to be able to cast a one drop light spell from my RFG, choosing to do Dispelling Stone, and then putting that Dispelling Stone back in the RFG. Now I could take the Dispelling Stone and shuffle it into my deck. I think it's better off in the RFG so I can make use of it later. Also probably would have been a better idea to pop the um, Castle of Belial instead of the Research Institute because I do have such good spot removal, but ultimately choosing to take the Research Institute. We do see that token getting generated, and then we go into Paul's turn. Voice from the Void being cast here to draw him another card, just to kind of draw into something, see if we've got some kind of backup here. And we can do a Judgment of Belial, which doesn't feel too bad because we can get a bunch of tokens. Um, we could bounce some stuff, stuff back to hand, but that doesn't feel super great because of my will advantage right now. Once again, you notice that I missed the trigger off of this demo on killing stuff, and I didn't draw cards, I didn't produce will. Um, this is, again, something you have to really practice, uh, and I'm finding that I still need to practice myself. Just missed opportunities. We do see that Judgment in Belial, so he'll make two more tokens. So now these tokens are 8-8s with Drain and Bane. And he can make another one, too, by tapping the castle, if he wants. Pays two, plays a second castle of Belial. Um, so now I have to get rid of any damage I have to deal to his face has to be greater than eight before I can deal any damage to him. Um, this is potentially pretty huge. Um, at the end of my turn, um, catching that I should have gotten some life there. He swings in um, against the Guardian of Elsevaria, trying to kill that. We go, you know what? That is... We don't want you to drain the life, because any amount of life he gains at this point makes it even harder, since we've got those two Castle of Belials. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Asmodeus' effect here, kill the Guardian of Elsevaria, put some counters on the Asmodeus, and get two more cards RFG'd. Now, Paul's completely tapped out, so we got some freedom. He does have the ability to make a lot of tokens, but we're in a pretty good spot here. Trying to figure out exactly the best way here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is even if we can somehow kill Paul this turn, right, we still have to get rid of Astema, which means we also have to get rid of um, Ast Asmodeus. That being said, because we already have um, Astema dead, the only way we can get to win the game at this point is by replacing them with uh, Satan. Um, so we, we still have to put to a position where we're like we have so much pressure we either have to put so much pressure on paul that even if we get him to zero life he knows there's no way he can stabilize and he just concedes um knowing that we're gonna find the satan very soon and he can't reestablish, or we have to flip a uh, belial or flip asmodeus kill it and then be able to pay two and make it um to be that way so one thing to keep in mind when you're playing against Sistema is you say, even if you're at zero life if you're not out of the game you don't have to lose um, you still get to do a lot of stuff here. In response to the uh, trigger of the Six Sage of Stone, I'm going to go ahead and sack the Goddess uh, Palace to get two more cards RFG'd. Unfortunately, hitting a Raisin Revive, which feels real bad. It's one of the cards, the deck's best cards. Moving into combat. Swinging at Paul for currently a grand total of 10, which will only be two. So we're hitting him for two damage at this point. If it connects. Swinging in with his Athena. Does a lot of work here. Can easily spot remove boards. Um, gets very, very big very, very quickly. Um, it can do a lot if we're if we're not careful 
especially since we have so much will available uh, and potentially can get even more will off, off the Estema if we don't forget about it. So he's going to choose to block with the token. In response, what we're going to do is we're going to pay for one red. Oh, first we're going to Gaunt Art for uh, Inferno. The reason for this is we want to turn on the Fallen text of Hunting Angel for the turn, which isn't going to do super much here in the early game. Um, but as I get more counters on it, it is going to do more. So we're going to shoot the first token for six or for four. No, sorry. We're going to shoot the first token for two, which will give me two life. Um, Hunting Angel will shoot him in the face, but it doesn't do anything. So then we'll go up to... Um, we're still at four counters. Then we can shoot the token again for uh, another four damage. So it'll take a grand total of four. Checking life totals here. We ping it the first time. Yeah. Pinging it the second time. We pinged it for four. So shoot it for four. So we'll gain four at that point. Go to 48. Get another two counters here. Now we do this a little poorly it's got six damage on it we shoot it again for six we don't need to we should shoot the other flying t the token that can fly uh that can't block this turn um for that six and then when we go to eight um we can uh shoot the belial for eight kill the belial it'll immediately kill both tokens um ultimately you know choosing to let the belial live reasoning for this is we want to keep the belial open so he doesn't have access to two god's arts um so having to rely on the beatrice god's art that doesn't do anything just in case he's playing erythropia is also a move uh to reset the god's arts it's another reason to let the belial stand especially since we're gaining so much life that it doesn't really matter all in all, we have 10 tokens, so now this is going to be uh, 8 damage, because it's 18 minus 8 from the two castles. So we go in for 10, take him down to 10. And then at this point in time, we get to ping him for another 2, because Hunting Angel's finally seen us gain enough life, because um, we gained 10. And then we can use this Modius Demon to life drain him down to zero. At which point Paul says, you know, it's the same thing that we said. I know you're going to be able to get to stand next turn. I can't come back from this. We'll go ahead and concede the game. And we move into game two. So again, this is the one thing to keep in mind. Like you see us scooping it up here. Um, technically, even though he's at zero life, Paul has not lost because the stem says I can't. But with that board state being what it is, literally next turn, all that it takes is me flipping over as Modius. Um killing it with my own Athena, because uh, I'd certainly have the will to be able to do it, killing it with my own Athena, and then playing the stand for two black. So a grand total of six will, which I usually would have had there with Calling Stone for Estema. Going into game two, Paul choosing to take the draw yet again. Calling Stone with Estema this early, just in case we hit an, a Cradle. Cradles are pretty good. We're playing a lot of those for our first time Stone Call with Estemas most of the time. Do hit the Scorching Bales this turn. Still not really seeing too much of what we want to see, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, play our second first Time Goddess actually being Verdandi. Our one cost Time Goddess here, which lets us RFG a card from our hand and draw a card getting that Athena out of our hands, we can potentially raise and revive it later. Six Sage Stone from Paul. Prideful Mermaid coming down says, you know what, look, if we're going to get big bodies, I'm going to get a little bit more aggressive here. I'm not going to be as protective. And just goes right into the wall as well. So to be able to protect them both is pretty good. That Prideful Mermaid is an 8-8 with flying and barrier because his life at 2,000 or less. And wall now gets to protect him does all kinds of good stuff here so we're gonna go ahead and recover call stone pay two to go ahead and judgment the estema this is to kind of force some stuff we can't target we can target the wall um and we're kind of trying to force him to discard a card while also just putting out um estema because again um she's a big threat she's a very big threat on turn two The 
the, the options that she opens up for being able to kill whatever my opponent plays while also producing as well is pretty huge. We're going to go ahead and block the Prideful Mermaid. Paul says, no, I will use Prideful Rule. I will kill that um, because it can kill anything. Um, and then also generate a token. So very good play from Paul here to get some aggression, taking me down to 32. Prideful Rule is also probably one of Belial's best cards. The fact that it costs technically three means that it gets around things like Garion and can just kill Garion, which is huge, um, as well as being able to be J Ruler or Addition Hate, just a very good card overall for that ruler. So we have a token, we have a wall, we have one will open, we have all kinds of good stuff here. Paying two. Playing our second time goddess, we've got Skuld. Um, so Skuld is going to attempt to target the token to potentially RFG two cards in the top of the deck and kill it. He's going to give it barrier, but we still get to RFG two cards. Wouldn't have killed it anyway. That's a raise and a revive and a Virgil. Virgil, we would have wanted to... Uh, that's fine if we lose the Virgil. We would have preferred the raise and revive to stay in hand. We're going to go ahead and swing into the Prideful Mermaid with the Verdanti. He says, no, I'm going to go ahead and block. In response, we're going to God's Art. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven unique. So we get seven plus one plus one counters on everything, which is great. And now we have exactly 10 cards RFG'd. So now Verdanti is swinging for 15 with first strike because we hit to exactly 10 cards so that progression here just on that turn three we've turned on the time goddesses here and now scold actually has swiftness uh so we can also kill the pride form mermaid this turn the option would be if he wants to go ahead and pitch his whole hand to block with the bane um but ultimately he says you know what i think i'll just let you kill it it's fine um so a pretty good turn for the time goddesses there and leaving up a lot of aggression um that now paul has to try to keep up come back and answer offer very much very little will efficiency here do see a prideful rule in the recovery which we're going to go ahead and respond by just letting it happen we, we start to think about it but then we're like oh wait we would have to tap down six each stone and then the will re recover uh, so we're just going to let you kill the bird andy so let's get that token here checks the rfg to see what is there again this is another case of miss uh just missing estema triggers <laughs> I think I've missed at least two will productions, if not draw power, or if not um, card draw. Swing into the Scald with the token. It does have Bane, so it would be a trade. Super relevant keyword here. Check in to see what is in Paul's graveyard to see what will we might want to research, deal with or, or with we're not we're nine to deal with a potential um potential of uh electo soon we try to use hunting angel to kill it he responds by discarding a card to give it barrier we're like you know what that's fine uh, and we're not even going to go ahead and sacrifice it we're just going to say let's get the tokens off board we're about to deal with a belial uh gets to swing in for four with the um the wall because it's got bane in for plus four and draws a card at the end of the turn another six sages stone here ultimately choosing to pass main reason for this is we're going to let him kind of get a little bit aggressive and then you know we have the opportunity to be able to say hey our board is clear uh, i'm sitting on potential inferno so if you want to deal damage and do some of my work for me that's fine um because inferno it does say lose life um so if he swings in and gets me and i can like stabilize uh, before he kills me i can use inferno to kind of keep things clear especially since he's going to be gaining life off of these tokens it just says hey you know all that drain not gonna matter um plays a voice from the void here after, after drawing for turn to draw another card
calls the stone. Can't comfortably swing with Belial now, um, unless he uses those six sages stones first. I'm gonna see an illusory Dagon come down. Swings in for eight. I'm gonna flash in Charlotte. Charlotte here um, to be able to uh, use her ability to play the Spear as uh, Amadeus from the RFG to be able to kill all tokens. And again, we feel like he's probably not going to swing in with Belial. Ultimately, though, does choose to take it. So I say, you know what, let's go down to 20 as well. In comes that gatekeeper of Elsevaria here. I'm gonna try to draw into some better cards, RFGing two and drawing two, and then drawing for turn. So even without the plus one, plus one tokens, that guardian is hidden for a quite a bit. Which is one of the reasons why I like the cards a lot, um, because you just get these tiny, tiny cards that produce a lot of um, versatility, both in terms of aggression as well as draw power. Deciding how I want to do this, what I want to deal with, um, ultimately deciding, you know what, let's try and get rid of realizing I need to pay for it correctly so that I have the will. We're going to go ahead and play Allosaurus, the invading of the invader of God City, um, which is another phenomenal card for Asmodeus. Um, the fact that it's just a, put a body on the board for two, that's a 10-10, that also just gets you any card in your RFG, um, just gets you a lot of value when you're removed from game, gets so, I mean, just a God's Art immediately turns this on, he will always only cost two. Um, choosing to grab the Virgil. Realizing that we need to be able to go turn on uh, Stan pretty quickly here for this list. Um, or at least get to a point where we feel comfortable dealing with Stan. As well as we need some life gain back. So um, we're going to go ahead and do the Judgment of uh, Amadeus. Or sorry, Asmodeus. He doesn't have an Enter effect. Um, so we get to retain priority after he comes into play. Wondering what that one card in hand is. The debate is whether or not we try to swing in aggressively first or just try to proactively um, play the uh, Virgil right now. Ultimately, it does feel like playing the Virgil is probably the best bet. Um, it, it gives us the most opportunities to maintain priority and give Paul fewer interaction moments and also potentially clears the way for the rest of the board to do what it needs we're going to go ahead and do the god's art of um the stemma here so that we have access to um so that we have access to the uh, fallen text of Virgil, because that's gonna be a big piece here. Killing Amadeus, or Asmodeus to play the Virgil. Virgil also doesn't have an enter effect, so we get to retain priority from when he enters. That being said, when we go to combat, Paul does get a chance to respond. Unfortunately, not seeing a response there. So because we have the ability we can go ahead and Virgil is attacking now, so we can pay one black uh, and shoot everything on his board and his face for 400 damage. 
Paul's going to go ahead and discard a card. We will get to gain 36 life, and Paul will take the 400 damage from the Virgil hitting his face. Before Virgil gets to connect, though, we are going to see a God's Art from the Beatrice, I believe, to draw two cards. Or, no, just doing it from the Belial to draw a card. Um and prevent the 10 damage from Virgil. That being said, we've once again missed the trigger from Estema here. We could have easily um, gotten one black and forced him to use a second Gazart to keep himself alive, um, but that would have also felt pretty bad. Um, we're gonna see a Choir of Angels get cast here, which generates him a token. Ultimately choosing to leave up our, st our other Resonators here, because we can't do any damage, so there's no reason to attack. Might as well leave them open as blockers. Especially since um, Charlotte can fly. Casting Choir of Fallen Angels again to get two more tokens. Knowing that both of my Godzars are already gone, this feels pretty good for Paul. That being said, um, he only has one Godzart left and isn't seeing that Erythropia stone. Um, so eventually we just get to poke through for damage regardless. Now he can gain some life because these tokens do technically have Drain. Or they might just have Bane. I'm trying to remember exactly. Down comes a Beatrice. Beatrice is going to pop the Charlotte. And the Virgil back in hand, get rid of the two um, kind of most aggressive units here, and then just pass the turn. Calling for a stone with the Stemma, hitting another six Sage Stone. Swinging in with Alasaurus, attempting to hit him for 10. He says, nope. He doesn't have a God's Art on this side. Um, so we do get a chance to just potentially deal some damage with him this turn. Um, choosing to sacrifice the thing to Osmodius to put some counters on. Ultimately, just to kind of get something. Um, get some value here, although we don't plan on flipping Osmodius again. Um, really doesn't do too much. We're going to go ahead and cast Inferno. We only get to pick one mode because we haven't God's Arted this turn. It doesn't have the Fallen text. Um, we're going to choose the Force Him to Banish Entities. One thing to note here is that he keeps Beatrice. Technically, we read this wrong. It says non-J Ruler Entities. So he could have kept Beatrice and a token um, rather than having it be just the Beatrice left on board. Also should have produced some will with a stem there, which could have been relevant because um, we could have played the Virgil, replayed the Virgil very easily. Choosing to trade with the Guardian of Elsevaria because of her bane. Oh, we did we did grab the black from the tokens. Uh, we're going to play Banquet Demon. So Banquet Demon is very cheap because we very much have 10 cards RFG'd. We have two additions here. So on enter, we get to shoot Paul for two 400 damage. And for one, we can bring the banquet back into our hand. So this is a way for us to kind of like repeatedly chip him down. Especially if you place anything that forces us to sack or anything else like that. Like I know there's that Beatrice's curse in the graveyard. We could just pay one and pads it back to our hand because we have six spells RFG'd. So banquet demon gets to be bigger. Unfortunately, the top deck is an institute. Doesn't really do too much here. Seeing as both of his J rulers are flipped. He does have access to every card in his graveyard that has a null. Um, so Voice from the Void, uh, Beatrice's Curse. I'm not sure. If, I don't think there's any Electos. He just hasn't seen them this game. Ultimately, though, not the best card. 
During the end phase, we're going to go ahead and flash in a Black Witch. This is going to get us some cards from the sideboard where we have a second Black Witch and then a Red Witch. Um, the reason why we're playing the Black Witch in the sideboard is because we really like this idea of being three and one so that you have a mess chance of hitting it, but one Black Witch becomes two. So just in case they have spot removal, they have to have double spot removal to get rid of the search effect. Um, I like this technique a lot. Some people are just playing hard four in the sideboard um, just to make sure that they have it for the early game. It is definitely player preference and just something to note. So swinging in here for four, since that's fine, go down to eight. Swing in here for four, since that's fine, go down to four. We do have the Banquet Demon in case he has some kind of defense, but ultimately we swing in there. He does have no defense here, so that's going to take him down to zero. And then at that point in time, we can just pay two black. So Paul and I are just being silly here, but we pay two black to be able to bring in to play Satan, but it doesn't really matter. We just need to pay two black to get rid of a Stemma, and that is going to be the game. Check out our deck profiles so later this week for these two decks. Hope you guys enjoyed it. These were really, really fun to play. Um, the deck profiles will be kind of updated based on some tweaks that we've made after playing these lists. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying class dismissed.